um, I bring it back to me a little about um, uh, so for an example like um, I still have trauma from school or maybe not maybe trauma is still a bit of a hard word but there's still difficulties that I come up against with school so when I was at school um, I had severe dyslexia I'm sure a lot of you know that and in the 80s it was really um, they were getting a bit better with, um, with the understanding of dyslexia but it was still quite bad like um, like I was often sent to sit in the corner I was often not allowed to play at break times because I couldn't do my work I was often shouted at screamed at sent outside the room um, and that's really like um, shocking for a child when you really can't do something which the teacher thinks you're being naughty because you can't do it's like so imagine if a child is like colorblind and the teacher like every day all the kids have to point out all the different colors and there's one kid that can't and the teacher is just like what's wrong with you you're stupid why are you being naughty point out the colors and they can't understand that like the child's brain just works different differently and no matter how much you try and teach them to spell or teach them grammar or teach them to read they can't learn in the same way that the majority of kids are learning and it's actually quite hopeless being in a big class like that and um and it, it it's a difficulty in the solar plexus it's that feeling like like um i don't know if you've ever experienced that if you're if you've not got like a learning difficulty maybe you haven't it's like where you're stuck in a situation and no matter what you do it's like quicksand you can't fix it you can't make yourself good at it you can't you can't just suddenly fake it or stand up to all the other kids and suddenly start reading really immaculately it just doesn't work and then you're also scared of like the consequences of being screamed at and it's a feeling in the solar plexus of like I can't do it I can't do it to like really like strong and it's also a fear which maybe comes a bit lower of being punished that someone's going to punish you and I still get this with authority figures so I still get this with like um, people in government um, people that take the authority figure as well you know some people in society really take on that authoritarian personality um, and if they're really firm with you like you must do this for me or something um, uh, yeah like um, paperwork for my taxes like keeping up with all the paperwork for the house and my bills for the house um, doing things on time like not all of those things but every so often I can get like that feeling in the solar plexus where it feels like a lump I don't really have so much seeking or, any, or thoughts around it that are seeking to get out of it or thinking how to resolve it it's more just like the visceral experience that of just like a, a pain in your gut like a very like embodied feeling and if I really put attention on it, I can hear very like um, subtle thoughts that are in there, very, very subtle of like someone's going to punish me or I'm going to get screamed at, those sorts of things. Uh, and that to me is something that through the years will expand and span, but it's part of this body story. I know that seems so hard for you to imagine, like you're all thinking, no, no, that's not enlightenment, enlightenment is getting over that which fair enough if that's what enlightenment is to you that's enlightenment to you but to me the freedom is seeing what is it that experiences that that there's something that's experiencing that that is huge that's always here that never moves that's infinite there's this big space around it and that that's part of being human our, our bodily sensations go into pleasure and pain and as as you grow in this subject and you evolve they dissipate and they become more open and they maybe have less response um, but that's not the freedom because who is that it's simply a reaction of the body so most of you think that and even in the way I communicate that that's Lisa's story and that's Lisa that didn't get something or Lisa that has failed to understand something or Lisa that hasn't released certain karmas but who is this Lisa that you believe in so strongly 
who is this you that has anxiety or discomfort or trauma around certain things? There is no solid you. There's no solid you that's ever going to get anywhere. And the idea that your body is going to get to a permanent state of bliss and that that is you is simply an idea that will keep you seeking. Who is it that experiences that? What is it that's experiencing that? This silence, this stillness, this space, this infinite nature that's right here, this looking that goes beyond all of that. And it's in that, it's in knowing who you truly are, that these feelings can be fully experienced. So letting them up like in their full veracity, and then they pass into something else. And it's knowing that it's not about getting to a perfect human. If that's what you're looking for, you'll be endlessly seeking. When you're waking up and after there's been like a shift, like looking at your dynamics is super helpful on the personal level. So it took me years to understand, you know, why I would reject paperwork or not open, <laughs> open mail or ignore it or avoid it or find sneaky ways to get around it. And it took me years to really get down to that feeling. And so now when that feeling comes up, I know instantly what's happening. Um, and that, that's really helpful on the human level, like understanding the psychology of these bizarre bodies that do bizarre things. Um, and in that it's healing, and in that it changes, and in that it stops you being so reactive. But notice it. Just notice it. So what's happening in your experience now? So there's a body that feels things. Maybe there's like a tight energy or an open energy, a loving energy or a sad energy. Just really like drop your attention into your body and really let it in. Like all your experience, like stop trying to like avoid your experience. So your mind is like seeking and your mind is like trying to get to another place, trying to get to past or future. But really let the sensation in. Like all the sensation, like what's happening in your feet What's happening in your gut? What's happening in your heart? I was going to say art. What's happening in your throat? And then see that all of that is happening in a knowing. But that's not a knower. The thoughts aren't a knower. The feelings aren't a knower. But all of it's happening in knowing. It knows them. So really letting everything in. And it's through that, like really just being honest to the experience, that there's something that's watching all of that. There's something that knows all of that, that's free, that's expansive, that's not bound, that's not a thing and everything. That's your freedom. So yes, that can reduce anxiety to an extent, but that's not the point. The point is seeing that there's a freedom beyond all of that.